In this video, I'm gonna show you how to do this film grid effect. It's great for visualizers, adding an effect to your music video. And I think it's overall just a super saucy thing that you can do in your next video. Before we get into the video, I wanna let you know about my new After Effects plugin, Shake Sauce 2. It's by far the easiest and most fun way to apply Shake in After Effects. I'll have it linked down in the description as well as a seven day free trial. That way you can try it out 100% risk-free, cancel at any time, but I guarantee you're gonna love it. So drop a like in the video and let's get into After Effects. So here is the effect that I came up with. I thought it looked really, really cool. It's a clean way of just making your video a little bit more interesting with the video repeating like this, the film grain, the grid, and then also the transition itself. I was inspired by just going through the YouTube music section and seeing this music video. And it's actually funny, I went through, uh, I have a subscription to ArtGrid. I'll have this link down below with my referral link. If any of you guys sign up, I get this for free for life, which is amazing because I use this actually a lot of the time. Um, but yeah, they have all the stock footage here. You can see it's just a bunch of these clips of these people driving through um, through the city with the, the mounted car. It's actually the exact footage that they used in this music video here. So it's kind of cool that you can make a music video visualizer or music video with just stock footage. I think ArcGrid has some really good high quality stock footage. I use it a decent amount. So, so getting started with your clip, the first thing you wanna do to get that like four by three aspect ratio is go up to your composition settings. And then instead of 1920 by 1080 or whatever aspect ratio you're at, go ahead and uncheck that. And I'm gonna type in 1440 by 1080, which is a four by three aspect ratio. So now our footage is in this four by three aspect ratio. It looks like it's framed properly, so I'm not gonna change the framing, but you might have to go ahead and play with the position on the X axis depending on what you like, but I like it looking like this. This looks good for us. So the first thing I wanna do is bring on that black kind of film frame outline here. You can see it throughout the video. The frame border I'm gonna be using is the Dirty PNG from Tiny Tape's Film Matte Overlays Pack. And once you drag it on, you can see it actually doesn't do anything. What I'm gonna do is press S to bring up scale and scale it to our frame. And it's not like a perfect four by three right off the start. And then I'm just gonna scale it to around 71. That way you can see it has this border around the outside. And the next thing I'm gonna do is bring on one of the film burn overlays. I'm using cine packs. You can use any one, just kind of like how the borders, I was using tiny tapes, but you guys can use whatever one you feel works best for your footage. I really like the one from cine packs with this overlay here. I'm gonna cut it where it kind of goes blue for a second and then cut it here as well. And I'm gonna do that for both of these. And then I'm gonna bring it at the end, at the beginning, cause I'm gonna have ours kind of loop. So you can see, just like that, there's like this looping animation with the film burn. It's kind of just like a cut between the scenes. If you have multiple clips, you can just do it and use it as a normal transition. But since it's looping, I'm just gonna have it loop like that. And the next thing I'm gonna add on is like that film grain. So I'm gonna be using Dehancer. If you don't have Dehancer Pro, I'll have it linked down below. You can also use add grain effect in After Effects. I just think Dehancer looks really good. There's a bunch of really nice looking presets that you can just drag on right away. So I'm gonna find one that looks good with our footage. And I think this Fuji 100 actually looks pretty good. I'm gonna play with the halations. It's basically like that red kind of glow that you see in old film cameras. I'm gonna bring the impact up and also the amplify just to make it more intense. Now you can see when you toggle that on and off, it just has like that kind of like halation around the edges of lights. And I'm also gonna bring on the bloom. So it's just kind of like this like light glowing look that kind of just sells that film look a little bit more. You can see how that kind of transforms your footage and makes it feel a little bit more vintage. Like I said, if you don't have Dehancer, you can use an effect like add grain and just make sure to change the output to final output and then bring up the grain. I always turn off the color noise by checking monochromatic and then you can play with the intensity of it and get a very similar look without having to have Dehancer. I just personally think it looks a little bit better and makes it feel a little bit more vintage, but if you don't have it, you can definitely get away with just add grain. And now what we're gonna do is create a new composition and change that width back to the 1920 by 1080. So it's a 16 by nine aspect ratio. And then we're gonna drag that composition that we made into this composition. And you can see now there'll just be black bars on the outside. And to fix that, we're gonna add an effect on called motion tile. And you can go ahead and drag that on and change the output width to 200. And now you can see it kind of repeats like this. And the border between the two clips is a little thin in my opinion. So this is where you can go back to that composition that you were just working in. And all we have to do is just make the black bars a little bit more noticeable here. So I'm gonna uncheck the X and Y width. So I'm gonna uncheck the link. So I'm gonna uncheck the link dimensions and just make this black bar just ever so slightly bigger. So probably 70.5 for our case that way there's just a little bit more of that black bar. 
And now when we go back, it'll be a little thicker like this. So we're already starting to get this kind of grid effect. I think one thing that really sells it and makes it feel good is when you add a little bit more motion into it. So we're gonna go ahead and open the transform effect and keyframe the position, scale and rotation. And I'm gonna scale out ever so slightly and then also bring up the output width. That way it repeats vertically as well. And depending on your footage, you might have to change this number higher. The more you change it higher, the more it will show. So if you see, if we zoom out, if we bring up this number, it just duplicates it longer and longer. It is kind of intensive on your computer. So try to use the minimum amount possible for what you're going for. So for us, something like that might look like a good starting point. I'm also gonna change the rotation to something like maybe one, and then maybe just like off center it ever so slightly. So it just has a little bit of motion to it. And then go to the end and I'm gonna highlight all of these and reset them and we can bring our keyframes all the way there as well. So now you can see it just has a little bit more zoom to it and it just moves a little bit. It has a little bit more motion. You can even easy ease these keyframes by highlighting them and pressing F9. And then if you want, you can turn on motion blur. So turn on motion blur up here as well as toggle switches and modes and turn it on to your footage. It'll just kind of have a little bit more of like a, a realistic looking zoom in. And I think starting it off even just a little bit more zoomed in like that might work for us. And at the end, I'm gonna make it so it doesn't like completely just go to like default. I'm gonna have it go a little bit past and like negative 0.1. So it kind of just like doesn't end like directly. This will stop it from feeling as digital because it won't stop in like the perfect position, scale and rotation. It'll kind of go past it a little bit. And then lastly, I'm just gonna add a nice subtle shake from Shake Sauce 2. That way it has just a little bit more motion. You'll see how it's gonna impact it pretty significantly here. I think an effect like shaky hands or handheld will look really good. I'm gonna do handheld and then just select on our clip and apply it. And then because it does zoom in, in a little bit, I'm just gonna zoom out just a tad here and you'll see how it has just a little bit more of that motion. It just has a little bit of shake. If you kind of watch the borders, it just sells it being a little bit more just fluid of an effect. But that's pretty much all I got for you guys in this one. If you did enjoy the video, be sure to drop a like. And if you're not already subscribed, be sure to subscribe because I upload videos like this all the time. But that's pretty much all I got for you guys in this one. Peace.